Distorted View Daily proudly presents When Your Grandmother Thinks Everyone on Facebook is a Pedophile. You understand that? No. They go to jail. They get beaten up. There's no way out. You understand that? What are you talking about? I have to love you. I'm not going to get in trouble because of Facebook and, and videos. Yes. No, are. I'm not. I'm not going to go to jail. <laughs> But can you read it? I don't want to read it. I'm not a. I'm not a sex offender. You are read of the book. Come on. I'm not. I don't want to read the newspaper it's only about sex a offenders. Little summary. It's okay. I, I understand. Okay, but I'm not no, a sex you offender. Don't. You don't. <laughs> Natty. You don't. I'm not a sex offender. You don't. I, I'm not a sex offender because of Facebook. But they're listening to what you're doing on the. Oh, Who cares? Oh. I'm just to be a sex offender. You fuck. I can't sleep at night. Why? I'm not a sex offender. Daddy, my videos are funny. They're not. I happen to love you. I love you too, but I'm not a sex offender. You can take them. This is ser- it's all over the television. Daddy, sex offenders what? are people who get in trouble by the law for actually doing crimes that have to do with sexual and activity, like like raping little on girls. The internet and everything. I don't rape little girls. I'm not a sex offender. It's not only about all little, little boys. Girls. I don't do that. Yes, it it's is. What you're saying on the internet? Too. Uh, what do I say? What is? I what? don't know. Well, then how can you yell at me? Because you don't me know. When I go down the basement. What is that to do with the basement now? You and your fucking friends. Hey, freaks! It's Tuesday, May 29th, 2018. Coming up on the program today, I broke my phone, ate rat poop, and impaled my hands on gardening tools. How was your stupid Memorial Day? Plus, whipping out your dick to avoid jail time, pulling out a shower head from Uranus, and one televangelist wants to buy the Starship Enterprise. It's the Distorted View Show with Tim Henson. My doctor wants to dilate my asshole to the size of a fucking coconut. Yeah, Tim Henson back here with you, kicking off a new week of programs. Uh, yeah. See what happens during a long weekend? I forget how to do this stupid show. The problem is there's just so much I want to say, and I wanted to say it all at once. Uh, Yeah, it was a long holiday weekend here in the United States. We celebrated Memorial Day. Unofficially, it's the start of summer. The pools are open. You barbecue and you remember all the dead soldiers who fought for our freedom. Brought worst in bloodshed. That's how I like my holidays. I'm American. I did not participate at all in any sort of festivities. There's no joy in my life. It's just work and pain and bad things happening to me. Lord Douche and I decided enough is enough. We've lived in this hellhole. <laughs> For what, three or four months now? We should probably unpack. One of the worst rooms in this house is the kitchen, which of course is going to be the most expensive to fix, you know, with plumbing and new flooring and countertops and cabinets and appliances. The kitchen hasn't been touched since the 1930s. You know, over the last couple of months, we've, we've sort of unpacked a few boxes, just the stuff we really needed, and we never cook. So the kitchen, you know, needed a lot of work. And really, what prompted this big push to get the kitchen done was a few days ago, I was scolding Lord Douche for leaving the kitchen a mess, like food all over the counter. I said to him, uh, why were you cooking rice? And also, I didn't know rice came in black. I knew there was white rice and brown rice, but I didn't know there was black rice. And he was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And that's when we discovered it was mouse shit. Mouse shit all over the kitchen. And as we pulled out appliances and boxes, we found more of this black rice. Yes, we have a mouse problem. Now, as I just stated, we typically don't cook in the house. We eat out 99.9% of the time. So, like, I don't know what the fuck these mice are eating, but they have to be pretty malnourished. I almost feel bad for the rodents trying to sustain themselves on stale sweet tarts and ketchup packets. That's no way to live. You're better than that. Go to a different house. This is a very harsh environment. Nothing can thrive here. Look at me. I'm knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. So we've got a a mouse problem. So now we're like, well, now we really have to clean the kitchen. You know, by the way, what the the mice were eating, we found out there was like like a a half-eaten candy bar, like a chocolate bar. 
and a, a peep. One of those from Easter. And not even this Easter. Lord Douche hoards can He hoards everything. I told you guys, when we, uh, in Columbus, when I was packing up to move down here to Cincinnati, me and my friends, we found food that expired in 2011. I kind of wish we still had that food lying around. It would probably double as rat poison at this point. So Lord Douche uh, was like, ah, we got to take care of the, the kitchen this weekend. And I said, okay. Uh, and also, I don't know why we thought this was a good idea, but uh, we we're like, let's work on the yard, <laughs> right? Like gardening and shit. Because out front, you know, there's just like a few bushes. We're like, why don't we get some flowers and plant those? That should take like 45 minutes. This was a two and a half day affair. I barely made it out alive. I've got a bandage on my palm because I impaled myself on some sort of hand rake utensil. I don't know what any of these things are called. I was like, I went to Home Depot and I'm like, I need one of those hand shovels. And they're like, oh, you mean a trowel or something like that. I'm like, what? Well, it's a shovel. It's in the shape of a shovel, but it's it's not as long as a, as a standard, you know, like six foot shovel. I just need a hand shovel. I thought that's what they were called, hand shovels. I wanted to get started early in the day. Lord Douche was like, no, it's too hot. Let's deal with the kitchen and the mouse shit during the day. And then, you know, in the evening, when it gets a little bit cooler, we'll go out and garden. Garden, like old ladies garden. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go plant our petunias. And Lord Douche does this thing where he's like, all right, if it has to do with the yard, you're in charge. And I'm like, OK, I will handle the I will handle the planting of these fucking dumb things. But, like, n I'm never really in charge of anything. Lord Douche comes out and, like, he's like, why are you doing it like that? Even though he's never planted a goddamn thing in his life. But, you know, I haven't either. I probably was doing it wrong. Who knows? As a matter of fact, the very next day, we uh, we came outside to look at our handiwork, see how the plants did overnight, and they're not looking so good. Little, little droopy. Anyway, it, you know, it took fucking forever. It was like nighttime before we were done. I had to go leave and get food. That's always my number one concern. The douche was like, oh, go, go get uh, go get us some food. I'll finish planting these rose bushes. And uh, you know how like some people attract mosquitoes more than others, it seems. And you also know how like some people just seem allergic to insect bites. That's Lord Douche. He hasn't been able to sleep for the past two days. He just says things to me in past like, I'm on fire. And then one night I went to bed early because I was like tired from working and I didn't see Lord Douche. And I, I asked him the next morning, like, when did you go to bed? And he said, I didn't. I laid down on the cool bathroom floor. That's all I could do. And it made me laugh. <laughs> laugh at his misery. All he wants, Lord Douche, like, loves to take baths, right? He'll go in there with his iPad. It's like me shitting, right? I sit on the toilet and I read my iPad or play games or whatever. That's what Lord Douche does in the bathtub. And, like, if he's got, like, stomach issues, because, you know, he's always got something wrong with him, his head, stomach, whatever. And, like, he'll just go in the bathtub and, like, rest <laughs> or whatever it is he does in there. But uh, since we've moved to this new hellhole, we've got two bathrooms, the one upstairs here, uh, has been redone and works, but there's no bathtub. The the bathroom that we have downstairs, again, it's like the kitchen. It hasn't been touched since the 20s, right? And the tub, I don't think it can hold water. So Lord Douche can't take a bath, but he still does something in there for hours at a time, and it's not take a shower. I think he really does just lay on the floor. It's like a, a, his way to get away from me. He pretends he's lying in a bathtub, but it's really just a disgusting bathroom floor. We have a very healthy relationship. I didn't even realize it was a Memorial Day weekend coming up. Otherwise, I would have told you guys we weren't going to do a show on Monday. I actually wanted to record a show, but we had so much to do around the house, and I felt like I had to help Lord Douche because I'm always sort of bailing on him where I'm like, I got to record a show on this weekend. Sorry. Plus, you know, he was not doing so well. He was already in a mood. Oh, I completely forgot. So the kicker, you know, remember when I told you that I, I went out to go get food for Lord Douche? I get to this fucking dumb restaurant, get out of my car, my phone falls onto the ground, and the screen cracks. I've had cell phones 
like consistently since the, like the very uh, maybe the second iPhone came out. I've had you know smartphone after smartphone. Even before that, I had a BlackBerry Storm and a Palm, and you know all the way back to the early 2000s. Never once cracked a fucking screen. Now it finally happened to me. So today I uh, took it to the Apple Store. There's 150 bucks I'll never see again. Well, I guess I will see it in the form of a pristine, crystal clear screen. Totally worth it, I'm sure. Uh, speaking of Lord Douche, you know, I got him to watch this Roseanne revival, even though he didn't want to because he heard like Roseanne was kind of like a right wing crazy bitch. And a lot of my friends were like that. Like, I don't want to watch her. I'm boycotting her. And I was the one who was like, it's a television show. Who cares what her personal politics are if you don't agree with them or you do agree with them? If you like the show to begin with, why not watch it? Who cares if she has a TV show and she's, you know, spouting off weird conspiracy theories? So I got Lord Douche to watch <laughs> this dumb series. And, you know, they were decent episodes. I'm not going to say, you know, it was earth shatteringly good. But it was something to fucking watch, right? I get home today from dropping my phone off to get fixed. And I see that once again, Roseanne has tweeted something controversial. But before I could even look it up, you know, and read the tweet, I get a notification from TMZ saying Roseanne has been canceled. That's when I knew the tweet had to have been really good. So Roseanne attacked former Obama White House advisor Valerie Jarrett. Do you know who Valerie Jarrett is? Because I sure as fuck don't. Partly because Obama's not in office anymore. Who the fuck cares? Trump and Trump supporters, you need to let it go. <laughs> Obama's out of office. Hillary's not running for president anymore. You guys are living in the past and you keep bringing this stuff up. It's only going to, you know, bite you in the ass. Kind of like it did Roseanne here. So here is what Roseanne tweeted. Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes had a baby. VJ, meaning Valerie Jarrett. You can't compare a black person to a monkey, even if it's not about her looks. Maybe she just had a Dr. Zayas way of walking. It doesn't matter. If she wouldn't have tweeted, we would be okay. She couldn't keep her mouth shut. And now I look like the asshole. Because I try to get my friends to watch her show, and they're like, no, she's a Trump supporter. That I don't have a problem with. And, you know, like some people are tweeting, all right, we got Roseanne canceled. Who's the next Trumper to go? And it's like, you know, ABC did not cancel her show because she supports Trump. She called a black person a monkey. Now, you may say, well, all Trump supporters are racist. And you might have a point there. Maybe. I don't know. It's certainly looking that way. That's a different argument. That all being said, I am not going to watch Tim Allen's show, Last Man Standing, when it returns to Fox. Not because he's a Trump supporter, but because I hate Tim Allen. There are personal reasons there. I remember growing up, it was uh, the, two, the top two TV shows were Seinfeld and Home Improvement. And a lot of the kids were like, Team Home Improvement, but I was Team Seinfeld. Because I love me some New York Jew humor. But I was the only one. And then my friends would make fun of me saying things like, You want to fuck Jerry Seinfeld? And I'm like, what? Why would you? Why does that even mean? You watch Home Improvement? You want to fuck Tim Allen? The weirdest little jab at me. Besides, I only got wet for Kramer. That episode with him wearing those white Calvin Klein underwear. Oh, God. Oh. All right. I got a couple uh, real quick pieces of audio, and then we will get into the news. First up, this is pretty great. It's an interview with a convicted felon. He's already behind bars. And while he's in jail, he kills a child molester. This, I guess this was his, uh, like, uh, jailmate, right? And to me, it seems like it's not so much that this dude confessed to being a child molester. Like, hey, I'm a child molester. And the guy just flew off the handle and was like, how dare you rape my kid? And then murdered him. It's that the, the child molester kept talking about it. And the, the other guy was like, Look, shut up. Shut up about raping the kid already. Can we talk about something else? Different topic, maybe? You just go ahead and tell us what happened. All right, I guess he decided to clear his conscience or something, but, you know, he told me what he was in prison for, that he had, you know, was accused of raping a, an 11-year-old girl, and he got 25 to life for it, and 
you know, I told him that's enough. I don't want to hear any more. Yeah, let's not speak for a while. It's quiet time in the jail cell. I first, you know, punched him a couple times. Still wouldn't shut up. Still kept telling me he wanted to explain that he didn't do it, that he was being set up and all this stuff. And I don't know, I just got mad and then hit him and, and then I killed him. When I knocked, I hit him and knocked him out, and then I took the shoelaces out of his shoes, tied them together, wrapped it around his neck, and strangled him. Again, you're offering up way too much information. You could just say, oh, I think he killed himself. He strangled himself with his own shoelaces. I mean, they probably will figure out that it was you in the end, but still. After I was done, I mean, I was, I was aware of what I was doing. You know, you're not even going to try to play the crazy card here. And then I just put him on his bed and covered him up and... Climbed in my bed and went to sleep. And he was able to sleep. I noticed, you know, we obviously we've been in, in your cell. Mm -hmm. That it appears that all of your belongings you packed up. Yeah. Okay. When did you do that? Mm, right after I knew he was dead. Right after you knew. So. And the reason for doing that would be because when you go to the hole, that's usually what the police do to pack it up. And I oh, figure, is that what you get for murder in prison? You just have to go to your quiet place. It's the adult equivalent to, you know, sitting in the corner. He is pretty courteous, though. Instead of having the police pack up all his belongings, he did it himself. I'm going to tear my shit up, so okay. let me just do it myself. So, so what happened to the shoelaces? Lost them down the toilet. Okay. Oh, the shoelace that you used to strangle the man. Now, those laces came out of Ted's shoes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then when you were done, you flushed it down the toilet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? Because I'm an idiot. I don't know. Just I mean, you know, obviously I don't think right. I'm a, in prison for most of my life, so my thinking isn't really rational. You always hear about how, like, uh, child molesters and rapists have a real hard time in prison. It's not unusual for them to get beat up or killed. And I get it. These are innocent children who are the victims. But still, most of the inmates have done some pretty heinous things. I would target 18 to 23-year-old girls, and I, uh, I'd follow them home, knife them, rip out their intestines, choke them with it, then use those meaty innards to hang them by the rafters and just let them dangle. And this guy is taking the moral high ground when it comes to child rapists. Yo, dude, that's sick, man. Speaking of sick, and speaking of someone who should probably be behind bars, um, I gotta say thanks to DV listener Torso. He should not be behind bars. Uh, he posted a link to uh, the Jonathan Nyhouse collection on uh, our Discord. So if you want every single song by Jonathan Nyhouse, act now. Download it. I have it here. I thought at one point I um I posted it on the sideshow. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I can uh, zip these all back up and uh, post them on the sideshow. But thank you so much to um to Torso over there in the Discord. Uh, I've got every single song from Jonathan Nyhouse, including um Husky Cock, which sounds just like all the other songs from Jonathan Nyhouse. For those of you who don't know, Jonathan Nyhouse is that kid who um, is into bestiality and sings about it constantly. He's got like seven albums worth of dog rape rock. Remember that band Aqua? I ranted about this band several years ago. They drive me crazy because they had that song, uh, that hit song, Barbie Girl. I'm a Barbie girl. And then they tried desperately to duplicate it. Right, they had a song about cartoon characters and comic books, and then they called it quits. They said, I, we can't think of anything else to sing about. Meanwhile, here's Jonathan Nyhouse continuing to sing the same fucking song. We get it. You're getting fucked by your dog. I remember this one time I went to Ohio where I met up with Cody. He is a cute mom you two once in a humping session. Or no, should I say a meeting session with me and Cody? This song is interesting because, like, I almost think this is admissible evidence. He's telling a story here of something that really happened. He went to Ohio, met, like, some guy who had a dog willing to fuck him. A mating session with me and Cody. Sorry, it was a mating session. A mating session with me and Cody. 
Me and Cody hiding a Lebo just to have some private time. All right, I mean, there we go. Look for the camera footage. There's got to be security cameras somewhere around that goddamn gazebo. Me and Cody hiding a Lebo just to have some private time. Even though someone refused to let me fuck this donkey because I'm not supposed to. Give me a break. So the owner of the dog was like, you can blow it. <laughs> but that's it. I don't want him fucking you. You can't fuck it. No funny business. This donkey because I'm not supposed to. Give me a break. Come I on. just want to mate. And then there's like another two minutes of like instrumental. I really want. I really want your husky cat. And I want it so much. I just want to give it a lift. Then I'll give it a soggle. On the way of many times. Just to keep them wrong at me. If I knew it anyone else in the universe writing and performing music about bestiality i mean thank god this kid recorded like eight albums this may be the only dog sex rock we ever hear all right so that's jonathan nyhouse for you and with that let's get into the crazy bizarre twist of the news right now If you like Distorted View Daily, become a true and honorable freak today over there at superfreaksideshow.com. That's TV's member site where you get full access to the entire archive of programs. I've been at this daily show since December 2004. You do the math. Thousands of shows in the archives. Plus, every week we do exclusive material just for paying members. Tomorrow's show will be exclusive. Friday's show will be exclusive as well. Great time to sign up. Superfreaksideshow.com. Very inexpensive. It's only $6.99 a month. It's even less when you opt for a quarterly, semi-annual, yearly, or lifetime membership. All right. Three quick stories. Then we'll get the hell out of here. First up, we've talked about televangelists raising money for private jets before. Well, we've got a new one here. Jesse Duplantis is a prosperity gospel televangelist. These are my favorite televangelists. They're the ones that are like, I will send you a little vial of my holy miracle water. This was blessed personally by myself under authority of jesus h christ for legal reasons we cannot call this spring water this is uh, i guess more aptly named miracle runoff water from the gutter system of my 24 million dollar ranch hallelujah mosha moka lakavika the holy spirit is inside me hold on one second oh come on arika shabashiki Whenever I get talking about my incredible wealth, this happens. All right. Uh, so, yes, uh, that's what a prosperity televangelist is like. Like, I'll give you, you know, I'll send you some miracle water and then uh, you, you sleep on that or drink it or something and then uh, you'll get rich. But what, really what happens is then he starts hitting you up for money. <laughs> Uh, and that's how he's able to afford all these private jets. Jesse Duplantis, uh, who has a global reach with his televan uh, televangelist ministry, is asking disciples for money to buy a jet that costs $54 million. So, quote, we can go anywhere in the world in one stop. Guess what? He already owns a few jets. Apparently, those other jets don't have the same reach. Like, they have to land and refuel pesky shit like that you know if jesus walked the earth he would not want to deal with fucking layovers and shit so it's totally understandable i really believe that if the lord jesus christ was physically on the earth today he wouldn't be riding a donkey duplantis says in the video he'd be in an airplane flying all over the world and you know he ain't gonna be flying frontier jesus is a first class motherfucker Hot towels and the comfy seats. Can I get an amen? He says his 40-year-old Jesse Duplantis Ministries has paid cash for three private jets and, quote, uh, has been just burning them up for the Lord Jesus Christ. The most recent purchase was in 20, uh, I'm sorry, 2006. Well, maybe you should trade two of those jets in for your new model. Why do you need four jets? All right, he now has his sights set on a Dassault Falcon 7X, a three-engine jet with a range of uh, 5,900 nautical miles. Its customizable cabins accommodate 12 to 16 passengers. A 2017 write-up on SherpaReport.com, a website focused on private aviation, said the list price for a new Falcon 7X was $54 million. 
Again, because it's a plane for his ministries, this is shit he doesn't get taxed on. Hello, Brilliant. ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jesse the Planners. Thank you for tuning in to This Week with Jesse. We're going to be talking about aircraft. Ooh, yeah. is that what we're going to be talking about today? Them flying chariots up in the sky? We're going we gonna to be talking about cloud cars today. I'm just a dumb old minister. I sure as hell don't know how these things work. But man, they go high for the sky and they fly like a bird. Like, he just sounds so stupid. You know, I've owned three different jets in my life and I and used them and just burning them up for the Lord Jesus mm. Christ. Now, some people believe that preachers shouldn't have jets. I really believe that preachers ought to have e and go on every available voice, every available outlet to get this gospel preached to the world. Now, I talk about this. I mean, my what message. sort of argument is this? You start off by saying that you've owned three jets. And then he says, some people say that pastors should not own jets. I personally believe we should. Like, yeah, we know. We know you're a fan of jets. You have more jets than I have of cars. Actually, you have more jets than I have of, like, all types of transportation together. I've got a car, and then, and then i got, like, a 10-speed. Lord only knows how many cars he has. And I want you to see this if we can, Caleb. Get it. In his ministry, he has framed photographs of his jets. This is the very first plane that I purchased for the Lord back in December 1994. Did, did the Lord get a lot of use out of that and I, plane? I, I said where I began. Yeah. And then the second that, that plane here for Jesus uh, flew many, many times to Vegas, to Hawaii. When I, I purchased was in January 2000. You know, all the places where gospel's really necessary. That's where people need help. Aruba? Not too many trips to Rwanda, I'm guessing. Where I used to be. The one I'm flying right now, and I've been with it's been with me 12 years. Oh, I purchased it old. in January 2000. This jet here is a little long in the tooth. Where I am. Now, I want you to get a shot of this one, Caleb. Now, this is the Star Trek Enterprise. This way I'm going. Praise God what I believe in God for. His foot. I, my mind is blown. Who would give this man a cent? <laughs> who would give someone who frames pictures of their jets and puts them on display, like at his church? Like, you can't fly in this plane, but you gave me the money to purchase these planes so I could go, I could go all over where the hell I want for free. Because you sure know you're paying for the gas, too. And then the last, <laughs> the last photo is of the Enterprise. Oh, if I could sucker you out of like seven trillion dollars, I surely would and I construct me the most beautiful uh, Star Trek. Oh, not the 1960s version. We're talking the J.J. Abrams Starship Enterprise. Oh, mercy, would it have all the bells and whistles, all the modern amenities and lens flares we've grown to expect from a J.J. Abrams Enterprise. Can I get a hallelujah? I'd hire me a crew. I'll accept one of them gay Sulus. I'd replace him with a nice Christ-loving, God-fearing man. Oh, only aliens who believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior are, are welcome aboard my enterprise. I don't care if you're green or you're blue or you got pointy ears. None of that matters. But you better worship the Lord and you better tithe me 15% of your paycheck. Shaba shaba shiki. All right, so there you go. That's what's happening uh, with Jesse Duplantis. Second story we have for you today. Well, let's see what someone got stuck up their asshole today. A man has had a six inch. Oh, that's not so bad. Whatever it is, it's not that bad. A man has had a six inch handheld shower head removed from his asshole after he accidentally slipped in the bathroom. <laughs> We've heard that one before. And by the way, this shower head, I'm looking at the x-ray. It's very dildo-like. It's long and tubular. Not like my shower head that, like, flares out at the end. So it really tickles. Uh, no, upon admission to Ram Manohar Lohai Hospital and Postgraduate Institute of Medical Education and Research, Jesus Christ, that's a long name, in New Delhi, the man denied he put the shower head there himself. His vitals were stable, and there was no evidence of blood in his rectum. It's always interesting to hear what parts of stories disappoint me, huh? Oh, no blood in the rectum? Drat. Maybe next time. Scans revealed the shower head was six inches deep into the man's pelvis, but had not caused any internal damage. 
All right, so this lead, uh, leads me to believe that uh, it's not the first thing that's been up his ass. Like, his butt is accustomed to this. It's accommodating. Like, if you've never had anything penetrate past those sweet pink puckered lips, and all of a sudden six inches is crammed up in there with force, you know, like as you fell on something, there's going to be some tearing and blood. In this case, though, it was boom, no problem. Easy peasy. Anal squeezy. Uh, no serious damage. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> I just like the term anal squeezy. All right. No serious damage had been caused, and the man was allowed home 48 hours later. The report notes the correct, oh, I'm sorry, how the correct size, material, and number of objects needs to be determined before treatment can proceed and suggests some patients need psychiatric consultation. Quote, uh, a proper history and examination is mandatory to look for signs and symptoms of a perforation and infection, such as a fever, uh, severe abdo uh, abdominal pain, and bleeding, said Dr. Piyush Kumar, wrote in the case report. Oh, look, and there's a picture of the bloody, all of a sudden it's bloody now, bloody shower head. History is often ambiguous and incomplete due to a high level of embarrassment and social stigma attached to the condition. The same was seen in our case. Though the patient reported accidental insertion of the shower head and denied voluntary insertion, there is a high suspicion of voluntary insertion for autoerotic purposes. It's not the first time a foreign object has had to be removed from a rectum. No shit. It's surprisingly common. A large variety of objects have been reported, including bottles and cans and glass bulbs. And I would never, ever shove a glass bulb in my asshole. We've played, we've uh, played audio and video of that guy shoving a uh, glass jar up his ass, like a mason's jar. But uh, you know, those are pretty sturdy. He still, it cracked inside of them, and then his, you know, asshole started bleeding. You may say, Tim, what did that sound like? Well, you he, he didn't really hear too much from the man, surprisingly. No screams of pain. What you did hear is uh, like him inserting his finger into his ass and pulling out chunks of broken glass. That's what you heard. And that's the most disturbing part. All right. So, yeah, don't just don't shove anything glass in there. Stones, small rods. That's all fine. Fruits and vegetables. Go for it. Vibrators, dildos and toys. Insertion of objects for autoerotic purposes is the most common case of rectal foreign bodies. So uh, there you go. And finally today, freaks, Desmond James was uncomfortable with the idea of dropping his pants in the courtroom and showing jurors his cock and balls. But he agreed to do it after his attorneys convinced him it was the only option. He either has really good attorneys or horrible attorneys. Go ahead, pull down your pants, show everyone your penis. All this for a speeding ticket? Uh, no, it's not because of a traffic violation. Uh, the unusual strategy worked. On Friday, after about three hours of deliberation, the jury found James guilty. I'm sorry, not guilty. Uh, that's a big difference. On all three counts of first-degree sexual assault, you see the plaintiff or would-be victim, described what his penis looked like. And apparently, uh, that did not match up to reality. The complainant told police that her assailant was a black man, okay, that he is, whose penis was not as black as the rest of his body. Defense attorneys Todd Bussard and Erica Barber said uh, there was direct evidence that this was untrue. It became clear the only option we had was just to have him stand up and show this to the jury. It was not something he wanted to do. It was humiliating to have an African-American stand up in court and show himself. It had racial issues, but he understood why we made the request and allowed the jury to see the evidence. Exhibit D. Bounce chicka -wee. So obviously this black dude had a, as black penis as the rest of his skin or in, or an even darker dick. So think about that. I know I will. All right. Uh, one of the things they taught us in law school, this is uh, his lawyer. One of the things they taught us in law school is to use the best evidence you have. It is what it is. Obviously, it was a very unusual situation, but we felt it was the most persuasive evidence we had. Bussard said of James, I think it really shook him up, but 
I think he realizes, having taken that step, it helped win the day. Before the dramatic display occurred Wednesday, were there cameras in the courtroom? Superior Court Judge El... El Padillo and Vitali tried to prepare the jurors <laughs> by explaining the birds and the bees. When men go through puberty, they grow their big boy hair no. uh, by telling them they were about to see some evidence of a highly sensitive nature. I wonder if the courtroom sketch artist was salivating. <laughs> I live for days like this. Finally, not just fucking faces and hair and shit. Get something interesting to draw. All right. <laughs> I don't know, hair. <laughs> well, I figure, you know, a lot of hair. You have to draw people in the jury and stuff. All right. We're all adults here, Vitaly noted. Approximately one hour beforehand, Bustard said, I personally checked to be certain <laughs> the complainant was wrong about the color of his client's penis versus the rest of him. I had to make 100% sure, he said, of his private meeting. Bustard said that when James showed his penis to the jurors, it was for only three to five seconds tops. I was timing it. I didn't want it to go on any longer than it needed to. I didn't want to humiliate him anymore. I wonder if they sort of like somehow doctored it. Like they shined a light on his dick, which could make it look lighter, depending on, you know, refraction and reflection and shit. This could be this generation's if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit type of thing, you know? All right. Bustard said that when James showed his penis, it was for only about three to five seconds. Bussard said he was too preoccupied with keeping track of time to notice the jurors' reactions, but Barbara recalled one of the women looked away. One of the male... Oh, grow up, bitch! One of the male alternate jurors licked his lips. What? No. Looked as if he was trying not to have an outburst. I'm sure they were shocked, but they did a good job of not showing it. A person who works in the courthouse said word quickly spread about what was going on in the courtroom. <laughs> the room became packed. It was mostly court employees. Bussert noted that in the closing arguments, I argued that his penis is actually darker than the rest of his body, the exact opposite of what the complainant said. Bussert told the jurors, uh, the jurors, for that reason alone, you must acquit. It's not all good news, though. James did not walk out of the courthouse a free man Friday, despite the not guilty verdict. He's already serving a 65-year prison sentence for a home invasion during which he sexually assaulted a 10-year-old girl. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> why? I'm sorry. Why even bother with this court case? He's serving 65 years. He's already sexually assaulted a 10-year-old girl. I thought this guy was like just a normal good guy who got wrapped up in, in this. You know, he's falsely accused. He's still a monster. Oh, good Christ. There, what a waste of time this new story was. That, my friends, is your distorted news for Tuesday. Let's do a couple voicemails to get the hell out of here. All right. I'm sorry. I, just, I started laughing after saying he sexually assaulted a 10-year-old girl. That's what made me crack. All right. Love to hear from you, freaks. Uh, 206-666-4463. That's our voicemail line. Call in. Say hi. I'm usually very nice to you, freaks. There are other ways to contact me if you hate the sound of your voice. Uh, you can email me, show at distortedview.com. And, you know, if you've got a link to something funny, DV-worthy news story or piece of audio, send that along. I'm all over social media, at Distorted View on Twitter and Instagram. I took a picture of my stupid cracked phone, so you can see that. Uh, and I'm on Facebook, facebook.com slash Distorted View Show. First up, uh, we've got a patron calling in. Uh, this guy or woman, I don't know, pledged a few dollars over there at patreon.com slash Distorted View. Just another way to support uh, the distortion, I guess. Or sp Yeah, support the distortion. Another STD. Uh, yes, if you pledge a few dollars, you get access to a special voicemail line. I will play your calls first. Hey, Timmy Boo, little baby faggot. You may remember me from such hits I as Cancer Puck Finally Dies. Uh, I'm calling because your show on Thursday, uh, you mentioned the, the gentleman that was raped, and you wondered how that worked. Um, I've actually oh, yeah. been talking to Level Lady Cat Lady in the Discord chat page. I mean, I get it. Like, guys can be raped, like, in the asshole. And um, I actually was raped by a woman one time. Oh, oh yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, I wasn't sure how guys could be raped by women. And uh, it's kind of a, a little bit of a story. Mm, I should interview you. And uh, it can happen. Rape victims come to Tim Henson to be interviewed. It happened. 
And uh, much like her, I'm not angry, uh, at least not as angry as I used to be. I did struggle with it to some degree. Uh, it probably has made some permanent Fuck changes to me, but uh, if you want to know more, let me know. Some creepy guy once showed me a tattoo. Or no, 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 it wasn't a tattoo. It was a, a stab wound or something. Remember I told you that? I, I almost got raped, and I'm still... I, it still weighs on me. Like, I think about it. Yeah, a guy... I told you that many times. Or a guy in the neighborhood is <laughs> like, Hey, do you want to see my stab wound? And I'm like, Yeah, that sounds cool. He's like, Come back to my house with me. And I'm like, Okay. Because I was a dumb, dumb 17-year-old boy. No, <laughs> I wasn't 17. I was very young. I was just... I was playing, I don't know, by myself or something. Um, and luckily, a neighbor... You know, a nosy neighbor is like looking out her window or her door as this was happening, and she basically shooed him away with a broom. Like, get, get on out, yo, yeah, get, sex offender. You know, like one would shoo away a cat on your porch or something. Uh, so that saved me from getting raped. Or I could have followed him. I see, I don't remember what happened after that. <laughs> so I'm either blocking something out. Or I've, ma- I've concocted a whole story about this woman chewing away the guy when in reality I followed him back to his house and some crazy shit happened. Timmy Jagu Henson is Rick from Baltimore. Hi, Rick. Anyway, I just wanted to say that after listening to April 27th BV, uh, <laughs> um, dog fucking is nowhere near as offensive as uh, shit play. In fact, I've never been offended by dog fucking. It's, uh... Well, I mean, you got this dog. Well, if you're fucking the dog, then you're hurting it. Like, it's one thing if the dog is fucking you. Like, that's still wrong, <laughs> I guess. For some reason. I, I can't figure that out wh- why it's wrong. But it's wrong um, because society tells us it's wrong. <laughs> that's all the reason I need. But, um, but yeah, the, the yeah, whole, know you know, the raping a dog. Uh, Scat is is typically among two consensual adults. But, uh, whatever. Typically. Oh, and, uh, there was one other thing that I fucking forgot what it was. Oh, yeah, I remember. So, right when you started to play that video, I put on some food to cook, and then I realized I had to take a shit. <laughs> so, while I was hearing that bitch, uh, taking her... Playing with her shit. Oh, I, I must have been playing some scat recently on this show. That's what he's talking about here. Shitting. How? Yeah, it's pretty special when you can synchronize your anus to my scat clips. Hey, Tim. Longtime listener, longtime sideshow member. Good girl. Here, uh, Zombie Zaki. Uh, just letting you know. Ha, I'm in the hospital right now. Oh, uh, no. What happened? Um, I just wanted to call you. I was listening to your show. Thank you. are doing a really good job. So uh, keep up the good work. How dare you tease me like that? I'm in the hospital. I'm probably dying. Just wanted to say, great show. Keep it up. Like, give me a little more. I mean, you don't have to go on and on and on. Diarrhea of the mouth or anything. But, I mean, you could uh, pepper in some details there for me. Well, I hope you're doing okay. Whatever the hell was going on there. Uh, that is all the time we have on this edition of the show. Why don't you guys to email me? Show at distortedview.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. A voicemail line for you at 206-666-4463. That's 206-660-GOD. Is it oh God? Spread the distortion, STD, tell all your friends about the podcast. Don't forget to rate us and review us on iTunes. I will see you back tomorrow, if and only if you're Sideshow members. Otherwise, I'll see you back on Thursday. Until then, have a great day. Bye, everybody. Make your parents first before you make it worse. Because it's about to get a whole lot harder.